what I think is necessary, although I prepared for a lot more, and then I will, uh, you know, uh, collect your your homework, right? And then uh, I was thinking of giving the homework today, all right? But uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm in two minds about it. Why? Why am I thinking that I should give the homework today? Because by next week is the 14th week, guys. All right, next week is the is the last week. And, um, you know, if I collect, if I, uh, if I, if I give it to you next week, then, uh, I won't see you. Then I just have to say to you, yeah, homo for deep foundation, the piles. All right. Then, uh, I ask from you next week, then you, you know, I won't see you. You see? So uh, you won't know what to, to send, right? Am I right or not? Ali, uh, Amy says yes. Ali could say yes. So to uh, <laughs> I'm always right. That's not the thing. You know, the thing is that make this happen. Saya nak muta. Iza pun nak muta dah. Saya berbanyak hanya homework. Tahu pun. That's why I said to Fazli the last time, we should finish the topic if you do homework. Then you start doing it slowly. Then I collect one day. You see? Kan? Ha. Itulahnya. Uh, saya pun tanda. Nak tanda. Saya nak ambil satu dua je. Like, and and let that be a representation on the assumption that you do everything else and then you learn all right my assumption is that then after that you know the heck with it lah again because the thing is that you need to uh okay now i have 59 59 i have 50, uh, class 58 right so i have everybody that's that's all i need to uh, to know all right so you just but uh, to Arman, there's no need to, to collect the upper, uh, you know, before the, you know, once in the beginning and once at the end. Tapayalah, kita buat sekali je. So, if I have that 59 people a few minutes ago, I have 59, they can uh, get to, uh, to fill that form, right? Scope lah, kan? So, I can get 59, uh, 59 minus 1, 58. So, I have 59 now. So, you just do it. Uh, when Arman asks from you right now, I suppose you can do it, right? So you can concentrate and do that. So I can get 58 and I can just say, everybody present. So I'm happy, you are happy, right? Lepas tu, you nak belak, apa you punya pasal lah. <laughs> but Iza, if, uh, huh? now 49 as of now, I have on my, on my screen here 59, uh, Arman. So macam mana tu? 49 as of now. 49, you mean the attendance? Yang fill up that Google form. Nine has no. Okay, fine. Ask those nine. Hello, nine people. You just fill up the attendance quickly. I mean, eight, eight more people, I think. No, nine people. Okay, you're right. Right? Just, just make this happen. Okay? Uh, so that, that homework, if I don't give it today, then it uh, becomes a problem, right? What do you think, guys? So I have to give one or two today, right? And then the rest, I just say you do it on your own life. You don't have to give it to me, right? So by next week, you have to have, to have at least give me one or two, okay? How's that? Diana says, okay, okay. <laughs> by the way, guys, are you happy? I, oh, okay, I pun kata okay, okay lah, kita lanjak je lah ya. Eh? Okay, what to do kan, dah macam ni. I was debating on it, tak payahlah buat next week je, lepas tu tak lah macam mana nak buat, tak tahu. Are you happy, Fazli? Happy question mark. Type in. Type in nak macam mana, dan dia nasi kata nak nangis. Nak nangis pasal apa Nadia? Happy for what? <laughs> happy lah, just to be happy to be alive. Happy apa sir? Tak happy. <laughs> no point to become happy. Apa punya orang ni? I mean, stressful. Uh, okay lah, like, kita buat kelas dulu. I, attendance is important. Okay, I've already told you about that. So my 
After first thing, I've already ticked uh, whatever I need to do today. So then the rest kita bersembang sekarang lah ya. Alright. False over area, sir. Stress. Memanglah semua orang stress. Saya pun stress je. Beli. Dah lah tak dapat jumpa student. Hita lah. Okay. So let's start. Yeah. We, 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 we want to be on uh, page 10. Okay. We try to finish quickly and then we can sembang. Alright. Are you there yet? Uh, page 10. Okay. Hakim Karim present. Okay. Look, I, I'm seeing that 58 sekejap, 59 sekejap. Alam, macam mana kan connectivity problem. Tapi as far as I saw 59 tadi, it's okay lah tu. Alright. As far as I'm concerned, uh, today everybody is present. Then I give, try to give the homework today. Alright guys. Are you okay? I'm on page 10. And get your upper two breaks book and your set of chapter 14 notes too. Yeah? Alright. And me get the uh. <laughs> Alright guys. Yes? Okay. Bali kata okay, okay. Alright. Look, I've, uh, I've been trying to finish uh, uh, last week, you know, we talked about the prediction. How to use the formula or whatever methods in relation to determine the uh, ultimate load or the bearing capacity, if you like, of the uh, single pile, all right? Single pile. Uh, just, just to remind you, a pile doesn't exist singly. Very rarely they exist singly, but sometimes they do, of course, right? That's why it depends on the load that you give, okay? To the, from the column, from the gate load and everything. Let me remind myself to get my pile. Oh, do okay, I got my pile now. Maybe I have to leave here. Alright, okay. Uh, so, there were like three methods, right? I said there were three methods to, to determine this, okay? Uh, last week, uh, we, we did... Uh, the static formula method, and then the, the first method was the uh, field load test method, right? The, the, we do the test in the field to determine the ultimate bearing capacity, and then we did the static uh, determination, the, the static uh, formulas to determine the bearing capacity. Now, the field load, uh, the, the one that we do via the test in the field, all right? Uh, it would be great just to do that, right? And then get away with it. But uh, it's not possible because it's expensive. You know that pilot test that we did, uh, that I was talking about, it takes about at least seven days to do that. Minimum, all right? Minimum seven days and it takes 24 hours at least to do it. I mean, not 24 hours for the whole duration, but every day you need to have someone there for 24 hours. Because you're taking the reading, all right? So someone is going to, not sleep for 24 hours and sit under that <laughs> under that cat lash with all that load, all right? And then take the reading and then, you know, the next day he probably has to go home and someone else to replace him, all right? So if you are one of those, it's not possible to just have one person because uh, you know, anything can happen to that person, all right? So it's always, you have two other person, all right? I mean, sorry, one other person, so you have two uh, camping, for 24 hours at least. And imagine you're going to do this, right, for seven days at the minimum. So you have to pay the guys over time and everything. Plus on top, you need to bring the crane to put the load and then you need to set up uh, the can ledge and everything, right? So it's expensive. And generally I said to you that if we have a hundred pile normally, if we can, you know, convince the client, we try to do uh, 3%. That means three other pile will, will test it, okay? But uh, most clients are not too happy about that, you know, you know, unless it's very big project, you know, they have a lot more money. Uh, if it is a normal uh, uh, project, you just probably do one test, all right? So you can imagine you're piling quite a lot, but you're only doing one test. You know, say, say 100 pounds you're piling, but you're only doing one test. So you say to yourself, well, hey, you know, I bet they have another method. And the other method that was... Um, proposed to you are the static method. That method requires you just to use the formula, but of course, uh, it relates back to the uh, site investigation that you do, 
all right because it's a function of the sampling that you did all right so you see in order to do all those uh, planning for the site investigation you need to know what you need to do in future this is the difficulty why in foundation engineering i you know how to teach you uh, in terms of the sequencing See, most, most normal, normal courses would teach you, you do site investigation first, then you learn about the shallow foundations, the bearing capacity, how do we uh, calculate the bearing capacity, and this relates to the site investigation again, in relation to what are the parameters that you need to determine, say, the bearing capacity. And I've been saying to bearing capacity, you need to know the C, you need to know the P. And then the settlement, you need to determine yourself whether, uh, you can get away with odometer test, all right? The conventional uh, method or the kaidah uh, lazim, we say, all right? Conventional method or the odometer method, but you know by now that the conventional method may not be satisfactory to determine the settlement. So you learn about Scampton and all of that, and all of those methods, right, requires you to perhaps obtain some sample and get all the parameters. All right. Now, in, in your soil mechanics, one soil mechanics, two, you, you're given a problem, you could draw the schematic, I always insist upon you to draw the schematics, and then you put in the, the C value or the P value or the M sub D value, whatever value parameter. I now you realize that those things don't come free. Yeah, They come by you determining what you need. Of course, you like to do everything, but it's not possible. Nobody is going to give you money right, to do everything. So you have to be cost effective. You have to know what you want to do. All right. And that is why okay, we learn all these methods, not because we like doing it, but because we know this is the kind of problem that we have to deal with. All right. It's like the COVID, right? this disease that we have now. We don't know much. We know something about it, but we don't know a lot of things. Okay, but we need to live, right? We need to go to work, we need to uh, buy food, all right? So every time <laughs> we go out of the house, we take risks, yeah? We take risks because we are going to be in contact with others and all of that. So they tell you exercise physical distancing at the very minimum, three, uh, three feet away. Three feet is the minimum. All right, if you see in Britain and some other countries of the world, they tell you you need to you know stay away from another person six feet away, two meters away. But if you like two, if you are like two meters away, then the restaurant cannot open shop, right? They, they can open shop, they, they might serve only one or two person or one table, right? Then they will go bankrupt. So that's why we reduce that six feet to three feet, and then we say, okay, you know. Higher risk, but you know, lower factor of safety. But maybe we balance with the economic situation. Okay, so this is the way life is, right? The reality of the situation, and that's the problem with site investigation with respect to soil, which is a complex material. Now, what's my point? You need to know what you're doing. You need to know what parameter you want, and then you plan your site investigation. Yeah, so it, it, it's like that. And, and, and now we're going to deep foundation files and we're still talking about the same thing, bearing capacity and settlement. The other criteria we need to satisfy, of course, is the material of the files itself. Okay, sometimes you overstress the, the pile, if it is concrete or timber, but that's, you know, a function of how we understand uh, the material uh, of the pile. Okay, so the last method that we need to know is this dynamic formula. All right, so we have done this uh, load test, pile load test, and then the how to use the data that we obtain. Okay, then we need to, and I, I mentioned to you, don't get confused between pile load test, pile load test, and plate load test. Plate is for shallow footing, the, the, the test one that you did. All right, that's a plate. They have similar setup, but don't get confused. I get students who confuse. All right, and then uh, I ask for pile load test, they give me plate load test. I ask for plate load test, they give me pile load test. I don't know what's wrong with that after me having set this to them. Okay, so 
And I did mention, uh, you know, the first time I introduced you to the piles, right? I said to you that, uh, what was it that I said to you? I said to you that the, the different types of piles, piles are generally less than three feet, the diameter, right? One meter, okay? And then anything bigger than one meter, we call piers instead of piles, the diameter, all right? If it is circular in shape, it could be a squarish in shape or hexagon and whatnot. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because, um, why am I talking about it? Now I forgot the word. No, uh, let me think about it for a moment. Uh, yeah, because uh, the question then is, you know, since you know the material, you know the type of piles, and then uh, how do you install them, all right? So there were two methods, essentially, all right? Remember we said about large displacement and small displacement, but the major thing about this installation is that it's either you dig a hole in the ground to whatever depth you want, you stick in a reinforcement, and then you uh, uh, pour concrete. Those are the board piles, which is uh, the small displacement or no displacement. And the other one, which is uh, not that type, you don't dig a hole in the ground, you go to the, to the field and then you bang it in. Bang, 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 right? You bang it into a required depth and then you say, fine, I'm done, all right? Um, so that's the other method, the, the, the banging type, okay? Now, why am I talking about the banging type, right? Reminding you about this, right? Okay. Because today we are talking about dynamic formula and we try to like, you know, like a few minutes ago, we tried to, we said to ourselves, we try to balance between cost saving and also having the, the correct bearing capacity and settlement, all right? Okay, so if we can like use these three methods, all right? Okay, the, 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 the static formula method is simple because we all we need is a piece of paper and a pencil, all right? And of course our brain. Then we just get the right parameters from our SI, yeah, and then we just stick it into the formula and we get some prediction. So the plate, the, sorry, the pile load test will then confirm, all right. We calibrate that with our prediction, so it will confirm some of the things that our prediction uh, says, and then the same with this dynamic formula. Now, if we use the pile, right, the type where we bang it in, bang, 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 not the one with the hole in, all right. Not the one where we call board piles, then we should be able to say to ourselves that look, you know, if I'm doing this, then you know, I'm I'm banging it in, I'm giving it energy, and then remind ourselves the soil right will be resisting it, right? The the penetration of the pile, okay, and then if what I put in and what you know the energy is is, is the same as that that is being resisting the pile, then I can, you know, uh, relate that to all the other two methods that I've been using. Now, if you get that, that's what this, this dynamic formula is all about. So let me just go on that page then. It says, in general, ultimate bearing capacity of a single pile. Yeah, it's still a single pile. Yeah? It's equal to the ultimate driving resistance plus the appropriate consideration of energy losses. So. From your physics, you know, from your O levels, your SPM, or from your whatever you did in the past before you come to university, all right, you know that I can give input energy and then the output must be the same, all right? Input equals to output, but then you say to yourself, that's not necessarily the case because the input may be 100%, but the output is not going to be at 100% because you're going to lose some of that input energy. So you get that the ultimate direct driving resistance last appropriate consideration of energy losses. All right? So the, the equation tells you W multiplied by H is equal to R multiplied by S plus energy loss. Input never equals 100%. There is always some loss. All right? You learn that even in uh, fluid mechanics or hydraulics, right? You learn all these uh, uh, losses, energy losses due to friction and whatnot. So this is just the, the, the same thing. So W is the weight, the weight of the hammer or rammer, all right? That falls freely under gravity, okay? So that is going to be the energy, input energy, 
And then R is the average driving resistance of the saw because you're going to bang it in, bang it in, bang it in. So you're going to take some average value to know the resistance of the saw. Resistance of the saw, say, at the tip. Okay? And then every time it goes in, this, this business of penetration of the pile as you drive it in. All right? That we have this word S. S is what we call set. Now, if you work in the in the field in the, in, the cons, in 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 construction, and you are well, if you're one of those people who are always just monitoring, right? Project managers, you know, who do not like to do sit in the office. Some people are like that; they don't like to sit in the office. They don't like to take. They like to uh, be project managers and be on site, sit under the sun, or rather stand under the sun. Okay, so they they will. You know, in the in, in the field, then uh, as you bang it in, you know, you will notice some people, uh, the 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 white, the technician on site say, "Oh, sir, it's already set." What do you mean by set? Is this the penetration? It may reach a, a a a very hard bearing soil. Okay, so it it won't go in anymore. All right, and that gives you an indication of a. Uh, uh, a tip or, or end bearing type of file, not, not a friction type of file. You remember I talked to you about uh, end bearing piles, tip uh, piles, or you can have friction piles. All right, They'll do. those two types, depending on where uh, you get the majority of the uh, resistance from the soil. So it could be friction or end bearing pile, you know, more than 50%. If you get it from the tip, then it's the bearing capacity of the pile of uh, tip resistance. All right. So uh, let's go to this page 346 just to reinforce the idea of set. Yeah, I'm taking my Greek book, page 346. All right, are you on page 346? You see this? Talk to me, guys. <laughs> okay, Mira, say yes. Okay, Mira is always saying yes. <laughs> Razin, how are you? Long time no see, man. <laughs> okay, now. Alhamdulillah, sehat, sir. Good, all right. Uh, anyway, you see that page 824. Uh, not page 824, that page uh, 346, that figure 8.24. All right, figure 8.24 has a title, it says Pile Driving Trace. Okay, so here's my pile. You have to imagine now because this is a small pile, right? You have a pile, okay, you're going to drive it in, bang, 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 right? So they put a piece of paper, they tape a piece of paper on the shaft of the pile all right and then it has a pencil on it like that all right okay and so on the piece of paper and as you bang it in you get that picture of figure 8.24 can you imagine it so as you go bang it in pew, the thing goes up then it comes down right then it stays constant you see then you bang it in again it goes up then it comes down a bit then it stays constant this picture. Hello, guys. Yes. Ah, okay. But you say pen marker, whatever pen marker, pencil marker, copper, right? So as you bang it in, it goes up. Then it's you know the the, the energy is being dissipated into the part. It penetrates, right? Then it stays constant. Then you bang it in again, and then it goes up. All right. So that's what that picture uh, 8.24 is, is saying uh, to me, all right? The, the imagination part. Okay, so on the y-axis, okay, uh, is the penetration, all right? On the vertical axis is the penetration. On the horizontal axis is the driving force. Okay, you have to read the, the, the whole chapter.
chapter, that whole section on path driving formula. Okay, if you like, can follow what I'm saying. All right? So, the, that, it has the elastic compression. It is the, 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 the maximum value of the energy that is being imputed. And then it sort of dissipated into the pile and into the ground. And then it reaches that constant value. That difference in the highest value to the, when it becomes set, you know, sorry, not set, it becomes constant is the elastic compression of the pile. It means that the top of this pile, it has been compressed. Okay? The pile actually has been compressed. All right? So there is that amount of compression Okay. And then from below that, that horizontal to the earlier, uh, earlier uh, consistent value, all right, is called a set. You have to remind yourself what is the set. The set is the penetration of the pile. So as you bang it in, all right, the energy is being given to the pile. So you get that elastic compression, the top pile of the pile, say the, the, the top part, it, it, it's actually compressed by a little bit. And then it goes in, all right? When you give all the energy to the pile, it goes in, it penetrates. So you get this set. So the set is the penetration of the pile. Now, you can imagine now figure 8.24. It's one thing to see the picture. It's another to like realize on the field what is happening and what this, uh, what Fazli called a pen marker, this tracing is giving you. Yes, guys? No? You have a hard time trying to understand what I'm saying? Say something to me. Mira says yes. Mira says, Mira, yeah, at this rate, you're getting you know? <laughs> Nadia says yes. Okay. Guys, the other thing, you realize that you need to read the book. Yes or no? I haven't said it this year. You know, when I see you. Yes or no? Uh, Mira say yes sir, okay, right. What do I say, Emmy? Emmy, what do I say usually? Respect to the book. Yep, good for you, Emmy. See, I could depend on Emmy rem uh, remembering it. Read the damn book. <laughs> because my worry is that you don't read the book. Yeah? By the way, before I forget, I'll puzzle it. Tuna bagi you ingat. Damn book too. Uh, it's no, no such thing as a, that a book. There's no such thing as a damn book. It's in the, you know, the book is good, uh, you know, or, or not. It, it is because, all right, you, you're the one who, who passed the judgment on the book, right? The book is a, an inanimate matter. It is, it doesn't have any soul. It can't think, right? So the reason why I say damn book is for you to remember. You have to do this, all right? Now, before I forget, the SOP is kind of, all right? They have already decided that it's going to be online and it's going to be open book and open source. You realize that or not? Has people been telling you or not? We'll talk more about this. Fazli, ha, huh? yes, open book, any open source, then you're going to cry. Mm. That's why I say it's better for you to come back. Aduh, tak apa, kita bisa bakar. Alright, itulah. I don't, I don't know lah. Yeah, so I was uh, in, the, in the faculty last week and uh, I asked the lecturer, Macam mana? So they all said to me, Tak lah, they, get, uh, they call me IRS lah. Tak lah, IRS. Buat je lah kot. <laughs> Aduh. That's why I said I didn't want to test you on second test. I'll pick up uh, some question here. Now you know the reason why. Okay, I'm... I'm Nanti kita bersembang lah. Eh, Amy, janganlah bersembang daun. Ini kelas tak habis lagi. Next week dah tak habis. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Alright. So, that's what figure 8.24. So, now you realize when I say that read the damn book. Alright. Read the damn book. It's very important now. Because in two hours, you don't know where the things are. You're going to be crazy. Yes or no? Alright. 
Because the other time when I asked you about what Dr. Azizi was doing, eh? Arman was saying to me, oh, susah jugalah pening kan, ya? nak kena assume, nak kena cari benda, you know, you have to find things and then, you know, you, you, you are you're panicking, you're stressing. <laughs> right? So, anyway, moving on. Alright? Now, I'm back to page 10. It says that uh, create fifth addition, page 346, give two equations to determine the energy loss. So the problem is, uh, if we can have the input equals to, uh, <laughs> the input equals, uh, Arman, we will talk later, right? But the student life, it's just not student life, meaning that right now it's lecturer's life, <laughs> okay. So uh, we're we are talking about if I can have input equals 100% output, then life is easy. But because input is not equal to 100% output, there is energy loss. So the problem in applying this formula on page 10, WH equal to RS, all right, is how to determine this energy loss. So that energy loss, different people give you different formula, all right? In different soil, they will give you different formulas. So Craig here at least give you, not at least, give you two, right? Equations 8.42 and 8.43. And this is just the equation. It's different because of the energy losses. All right? Now, 8.42 has this uh, C sub P. This C sub P is the... Uh, C sub P divided by 2 equal to 25 millimeter is just, you know, the elastic compression they're trying to take into account. All right. And then 8.43 has this theta value, which has some, you know, the elastic compression, how much it is, and then how much is the set and all of that. They're trying to figure out this, this elastic compression. You imagine you have a pile and you're trying to figure out the compression of a, say, concrete pile. That's not going to be easy, isn't it? All right, unless you might measure all the, the compression for each of those parts. So at any rate, energy losses, right, bottom line argument is not an easy prediction to make. So that's why you have two equations. Craig gives you two equations, but you open a book on piles, it'll give you tons of equations. So that's the problem with this uh, dynamic formula. Now, fine. Okay. Uh, it says that uh, in, in your set of tone, page 10, the smaller the set, the greater the resistance to penetration. Of course, uh, when you're driving the pile, if you have very small set, all right, penetration in the soil, okay, that means the soil is harder, right? It's stronger, stiffer, it's giving a more resistance, obviously, right? So, this is just trying to relate to you the relation between the set and the resistance of the soil. So it goes back to what you understand, okay, uh, from previous. If you have a denser soil, more resistant. So a pile harder to uh, get into the ground. That means it's uh, better in the sense that you now have uh, better resistance, okay? So loose soil, easier to get into the ground, less resistance, so you have to keep finding uh, enough ultimate bearing capacity either from the shaft or from the tip. Now, all right. Uh, why am I smiling and laughing? Because I'm saying to myself, those people who have not been listening to me, uh, who have never bothered to read the book, now is going to have a hard time, isn't it? Right? So... <laughs> You have what about two more weeks, three more weeks before you go for your final exam, so you better read the book like crazy now. Anyway, so energy loss determination varies in the power driving formula. Okay, I've already explained that to you. And it says many formula are available. Okay, all right. So depends on what formula you use. Use is not recommended for design, although useful for monitoring during installation, given that you have so many of these uh, predictions which is a function of the energy losses, all right? And there are so many of these energy fault losses formula. It's, it's, it's easy with respect to W multiplied by H. That's a constant. And R multiplied by Z, you have what you have the traits. You can measure it. But this energy loss, you can't really measure it. And therefore, you have many equations. So you can use all the equations and they probably give different energy losses value. 
All right. So because of that, it's not something that we can depend on, uh, like the static formula. All right. The plate, the the pile locus, we can depend on, uh, but you know we don't do on all the all the piles. We do only on one or two or three piles, or I'll say one hundred piles. So again, you you hope that it is a, a representative of the of the field condition, but you know by now that soil is so variable. You know that. Very rarely, well, sometimes not very rarely. So a lot of the times, you get uh, variability in the uh, in the profile of the soil. Right, that it becomes difficult for you to just depend on one or one <laughs> one test to be saying that it is representative of all the other parts that you drive. Right, so given that uh, situation. You then say to yourself, okay, I'm going to use this since I want to, you know, uh, reduce costs and be economical and yet be smart and intelligent about it, right? Find the balance. I'm going to have a lot of the static formula, which I understand as that's a function of the uh, sampling and site investigation that I do. And then I'm going to have some pilot tests, which I can calibrate and, and, and see how well my static formula uh, uh in terms of the prediction now what well, if i if i'm driving if i'm not driving the pile then i can't use this uh, dynamic formula right so if i'm driving the pile then i can say to myself this use is uh it's not recommend recommended for design but you can monitor during uh, installation in other words you monitor during installation and you say to yourself well my ultimate look for my static formula is going to be this and then i'm going to bring it in and say some of this uh you use some of this energy formula it should be about this this uh, value all right it gives you a ballpark figure and coupling couple it with the pilot test it will calibrate my static formula so you know i have not too bad in terms of the uh strategy to determine the ultimate bearing capacity of a single pile you get what i'm saying you know if i just have a formula static formula and i just use that static formula and i don't have pilot test and i don't have this uh, dynamic formula for installation of this uh, file then how do i know that my you know my static formula is correct i, I could use so many different methods and then, you, I, then i could say to myself that i hope this is correct all right and then it's going to be a function of my site investigation too and if i mess up in my site investigation then you know there's no way to know right so that is why we have the static formula we do a pilot test to confirm and then if you are driving the pile then we also use it to monitor what our uh, bearing capacity prediction is all about okay all right so i'm done with single uh determining the bearing ultimate bearing capacity of a single pile all right so i'm moving on now and i said to you most of the time we, we, we have to like uh have a couple of this pile see i have a column up here i have a, a column and then i have a, a footing of sort we call it a pile cap so i am now having can you see this if you can't see it, I have to move this down a bit. Can you see it? Okay. Can you see this? I have three piles here. Oops. All right. If I rotate it the other way, it's probably better though. Chakila showed me a picture once of rotating. If I can rotate. I don't know. I can't rotate it, guys. Okay, let me put it on top of the book. Okay, here's the book. I don't know, I only have two hands. <laughs> I have one here, okay? I have another one here, I have another one here, and another one here. So I have a pile of four. All right? Pile of four. Let me just do this and then I can take the phone, perhaps. There's one, there's two, there's three, 
just walk. Okay. All right. Let me just take my. Can you see this? Say yes or something. Inshallah. Uh, Arman say yes, Amy says yes, oops, Shasha says yes, yeah, you can see this, right, okay, I have four piles here, right, on top of the pile, uh, there is a column that is coming, right in the center, make life easy, there is a right at the center of the, here there is a column coming down, okay, so, for that load from the column to be transported to all these four parts, I have to have some sort of a rough, all right, to cover this four pile. So, okay, I'll use this book, all right? I cover it up. You have to imagine that it's nicely covered. This is a bit too big here, right? So I put it up like that. Okay, all right? This is called a pile cap. And then I have a column here, my life load, dead load, whatever. So I transfer to the pile cap and the pile cap uh, is going to uh, transfer it to the pile. All right. Okay, guys. Okay. Now I can remove all of this, right? It's a good book, by the way. <laughs> right. So piles, generally, they don't. Uh, occur as a single one, right? They occur uh, in groups. Sometimes they occur alone, but generally, you know, they occur in parts because your dead load, your life load could be too big for one single pile to, to, to handle because it's a function of the soil around it, right? Again, it's a tip resistant and the sharp resistance that is going to uh, resist the uh, column load, right? So now, you know now piles, what piles in groups are all about. A few minutes ago, we were talking about uh, single pile, and we know all the three different methods to predict the ultimate bearing capacity. Now we are trying to learn how to find these group piles. When they behave in a group, what, how, 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 how will, are we going to predict the ultimate bearing capacity? So if I can find for a single pile, Using say a static formula, right? The ultimate bearing capacity for this single part in the soil, right? Now I will say to myself, if I have four of this, right? I have four of this, and I get the 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 ultimate bearing capacity, which is which in other words the resistance, right, from the soil, right? For one of those piles, then if I have four piles. So I should multiply by four, no? That 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 is uh, pretty logical, right? So that is your first thought, and you assume, of course, that the soil is behaving in a uniform manner. It's just an assumption, right? Okay. So the total supporting capacity of a group of n point n or point or tip bearing piles, the one that comes from the tip, okay, the majority comes from the tip of a single pile. So 50% of bearing capacity, more than 50% comes from the tip, okay? is often taken to be the sum of the individual supporting capacity of the piles making up the group. So if this one gives you 10 units from the soil, all right? So I have four, then it can resist say 40 units, right? That's logical. Uh, for the end bearing piles. But for a group of friction piles, that works fine, not too bad, all right? For end bearing capacity piles, for tip, tip uh, piles, okay? But if you have friction piles, friction piles are piles that get more than 50% from the friction of the shaft, right? The shaft and the soil, they interact and you give a load, so the, the, the pile wants to come down but the soil around it is resisting it through friction, all right, resisting it through friction, and then is uh, giving an upward load, uh, fighting the dead or life load that you give to the pile. So uh, this doesn't quite work for friction pile, okay? 
and especially unless unless the path spacing is very large in comparison to the path diameter. Now you want to see in this, this figure 14.29. This figure on the next page, which is uh, I don't know why the page you have it. See here? Yeah, I am. Can you see? <laughs> I don't want to break this this file. Ah, never mind. I'll break it. Okay, here, yeah. right on this page. Okay. All right. So what that figure tells you in Lucent, and you have Bruin piles, the group capacity exceeds some of the individual pile capacities because of the impacting effect of pile driving in the sand. Uh, I'm just reading it, then I'm going to look at the, the, the picture. All right. So if I look at the picture, I have a loose end. Yeah. I have large group long piles, I have small group short pile. So whether I have stock pile or long pile, it's just take it from me for now that uh, short pile or long pile, it, it has a definition by itself, but because, uh, but because, uh, I don't want to go into the detail. You just accept the fact that some some piles are called long piles and some piles are called short piles, right? Uh, you can just imagine to yourself whether you have uh, whether you have long pile or short pile. Now, large group or small group, same story. Okay. What is important is for you to look at that uh, on the y-axis. I have the bearing capacity of group. And then I have some bearing capacity of the single pile. All right? the, the, the denominator sum of bearing capacity of single pile is what I said just now. If my single pile is going to take 10 units, I have four. I then have 40 units of uh, ultimate bearing capacity that is going to be able to uh, resist. Yeah? Resist the column load or date load that I get. That's the one at the bottom of that y-axis ratio. All right, what we refer to as the, the, the denominator. The one on top, bearing capacity of group, all right, is what is actually happening in the ground, okay, when it's functioning with four pile, all right, so that's the two ratio. Okay, you notice that if what you say, all right, in this, uh, in this loose loose uh, pile, uh, sorry, not loose pile. In this loose soil, okay, friction pile, okay. If you say to yourself that the sum of bearing capacity of single pile is equal to the bearing capacity of the group, then the ratio should be one, right? But you notice that it's not one. It starts off with one, then it increases, then it comes down again as your pile spacing increases. All right. So those are for the friction pile. Now, if you look at the same picture for cohesive soil, for clay, all right, it is less than one. So the bearing capacity of the group of the pile is less than the sum of the bearing capacity of a single pile until that pile spacing increases. All right, so the question then, why is it doing this? <laughs> okay, why is it doing this? So let's go back to the sand. The sand, we are driving the pile, right? We are banging in it, bang, 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 bang. Now, so now I have one pile in the, in the sand, all right? And if I have loose sand, especially, all right? This is all friction pile, right? If the majority of the bearing capacity comes from the shaft, from the friction, more than 50%, so 60, 70%, whatever, then, you know, uh, comes from the friction and only uh, less than 50% comes from the tip. So those are the, you know, if you have more than 50%, you call it the end bearing capacity pile. So let me get back. I'm banging in one pile. Now I'm banging in another pile. Bang, 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 bang. I have loose soil, sand. All right? And they are giving me the friction. So as I am banging it in, what happens to the sand in between these two piles? Now I need a response from you. Remember, it's loose. I can drink some water while you're thinking. I can, I can, I can feel you thinking. You know, your brain is, is bursting. No response. Wow. <laughs> I have one guy who's sleeping. I have fifty-eight people now. Muhammad Nur Apizi. 
back, y'all. <clears throat> a busy is right, so huh? it's loose. So we're banging it in. One the vibration from the the the, the energy input that you give is is making it more dense. All right, it's making it more dense than 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 the, than the original uh, situation. And you're banging another one here. See at the back, and another one here at the back here. So it's getting more compacted. But you remember, you says that so I get get more compacted soil. So if it is more compacted, a few minutes ago today I said to you, right? If you have a, a higher density soil, a stiffer soil, it will give you more resistance. I said, right? So that's the story here. It gives you more resistance because it's now more compacted, and you know more compacted soil gives you more higher pressure. Now, if I move away the pile, you see the distance. I'm moving them away from each other. So it is not going to be as compacted as if they are going to be near each other. Is it? Yes or no? Yes, yes. Okay, Nadia says yes. Nadia, see, I'm, I forgot even how you look like now. Yeah, like I have to, to look at the, uh, to your face, kalau ada foto. Liana pun dah, Liana sort of remember now. Hey, ya Allah. <laughs> okay, so that's why you get this picture, all right, for the, the friction pile, all right. Now, however, it softly, it softly, it's the opposite, all right. Let's see what the self note says. It doesn't say anything, it doesn't matter, right? There is also, <laughs> yes, uh, for softly, the group capacity is less than the sum of the individual capacity, right? Cohesive. Cohesive soil, they are at, 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 you know, the word is adhesion. So they, they are sticking to the pile. So their, their behavior is different from, from the sand, all right? You, you should know that by now. Because there is also this business of in clay, the pore water pressure uh, increasing. And then you need to dissipate it. When the pore water pressure increases, as you bang it in, Remember in clay, we always take it as a uh, twice analysis, right? One is, is saturated, the other one is unsaturated, not unsaturated. When the pore pressure has been dissipated, we call it undrained and drained, right? So when the pore pressure increases, you have a strength which is lower, right? Lower than its original value, okay? So that's why, you know, uh, in, in clay, it is the opposite. As you bang it in, the pore pressure increases, so the effective stress now decreases. All right, the strength decreases, and over time, the dissipation of pore water pressure <laughs> is done with. So the pore pressure stabilizes, so it now becomes like almost back to its original state. All right, see, if you remember all of this, it's not difficult. All right, so now, <laughs> now that I'm on, on figure 14.29, now I'm going to give a definition. All right, on that uh, y axis, that two that that ratio, not two, the one ratio. Okay, the ratio of bearing capacity of group was sum of bearing capacity of single pile. I'm going to call it eta. All right, I'm on page 10, page 11. It says the efficiency of the group of the file. There is that symbol eta. All right. Eta is equal to the bearing capacity of group over the sum of bearing capacity of single pile. All right. So now, now you understand the theory. You understand the physical uh, situation. Why certain things occur. All right. Then you know the, we still have to solve problem. Okay. Uh, because like I said, we have piles and groups, and then the, you know we have to still. Uh, resist the dead load and life load that comes down to uh, from the column and from you, from you sitting on the floor and all of that, all right, stuff you learn in structures. So the next page, 12. Okay, so we're going to use the several uh, of these efficiency formulas, all right. One of them uh, is the Zagi and Pack. It says the ultimate bearing capacity of a group of power, okay, is equal to QR, multiplied by L 
plus S multiplied by D plus 2B plus 2L. B is the width of the pile group, L is the length of the pile group, and S is the average shear strength of soil over embedded length D of pile group. Note that S, I did not use C sub U. Sometimes the book use C sub U, but S is the average value. And I underline that, average value. If you are given the, the variation of the unranged shear strength, yeah, with depth, you must find the average value. And perhaps when we do the example today, this will be uh, reminded to you. Yeah. So Q sub G is the ultimate supporting capacity of the power group. So you see the picture down there, you have depth D, you have breadth B, and you have the length L. All right. Now this formula assumes that the power group behaves as one solid block or pier. Block failure rarely associated with sandy soil, more common with friction piles in clay. So what, what is happening here? Oh, oops. Let me say oops again. No. <laughs> right. Guys, while I'm talking to myself now, okay, I'm trying to this square group or pile or rectangular group of pile, whatever. In this case, this uh, square group of pile. You know, when you are done with, with, with this course and then you set for the exam and everything and you got your result, I don't know what result you get, no when you ask me about whatever result I give, I give to you, all right? I'm gonna assume that everybody passed. Whether you get A or B or C or D, that's another story, okay? So when is all this over, and then probably you come back in September. After all, schools are all coming back. So, Shasha, yeah? And then Shasha is the Prina, the Parah Shasha. All right? Schools are all coming back. Probably you come back in September. By that time, I'm already unemployed. <laughs> okay, fully retired. All right, and doing other things. Maybe we all should go for dinner. Yeah? All of us. Siapa yang nak arrange ni? Yeah, now. Hello, are you awake or what? <laughs> Dadia says yeah. Musa says yes. Yeah, kita enjoy lepas tu dah. Betul lah Akbar. Akbar Rahman pun kata setuju eh. Latar lah kan. If we come back in September. If we don't come back in September, Azra'i pun kata polis sir. We arrange lah sama-sama kita je kan. Alright, kita sebut uh, apa tu. Uh, we, we, we all sort of like uh find the money and then we we, we make it somewhere lah kan eh pasti ah nanti lah kan bila you know after the course is over and what not right when you can come back and what not if we never come back tak tahu lah you know next year lah kot you come back if you don't come back then next year right i'll i'll probably if i remember i'll just uh message to to apa shakila lah kan and then, Shakila, boleh ke kita pergi dinner ni? Covid pun dah tak ada ni. <laughs> I mean, the thought just just came into into my 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 brain, right? It is it's a bit ridiculous. So again, uh, nantilah next year, yeah? Because uh, we'll see what happens then. Okay? So, I I was trying to talk about this file, okay? Alright? And uh, this is the depth. This is the upper two, the length, and then this is the breadth. Okay, length and breadth is up to you. Lah, eh? So you have the depth. All right, this block failure, this block failure, basically this, this whole thing failed like that. See, this is moving on the side. Yeah, I don't want that to happen. Okay, you all fail in a block like that. All right, not, not singly failing. So I better do all that. If I can get a piece of paper. So oh, I have my hand. Right, here, here's my block, right? Can you see that? Ayn, are you awake? Dinner room master, lah, man, the bullies. Ah, oh, there's 60 of you. <laughs> okay, Fazli says yes, yes to this. You can see the picture, right? I suppose Ain is not around anymore. He's probably gone, she's probably gone to sleep now. Okay, all right. 
So now I'm just going to draw it so that it's, it, it just tilt. All right. I know how to draw it when it's three dimension like that. So let's just say surface. So let's just say that it, it tilt something like that. Okay. Something like that. It, it just kill. All right. I, I don't smoke anymore. If I smoke, then I probably just use my box to show it to you. All right. Okay. All right. So it, it, it is in a group. It fails. All right. And so that is what is meant by that block failure. The, the failure of the block itself. What I have here in the picture is a block. All right. Okay, and, and this block failure, of course, is, is because we talk about cohesions uh, uh, in, in clay, right? It only occurs with respect to uh, cohesive material. It doesn't occur with sand. Sand doesn't have behave like this because it doesn't have that gluey uh, behavior, right? Where it, 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 it sticks to the pile, all right? So now it's time to do one, uh, two examples, right? On all these ideas that we've been exploring uh, bottom of page 12 it says uh, page 14.73 of notes and example 8.9 of grade so there are two examples there so that example 8.9 of grade uh, should be page 349 if you're using the fifth edition all right that that page 356 i use a different edition so page fifth edition page 349 now 14.73 of notes I hope you have your page 14.73. I'm still unhappy, not unhappy, dissatisfied that I couldn't get a response from uh, from Ayn. Ayn Titra, are you around? Or have you gone to sleep? Tadi ada, belum boleh tadi. Puzzle. Dia pergi tandas. Lamanya pergi tandas, Puzzle. <laughs> Aduh, eh. Masak. Sekejap, sir. Saya call dia. Macam mana nak call dia, Amy? Oh, ya. Yeah. Okay. You can use your phone to call dia, ya. Yeah. Dia tengah makan, sir. Ya Allah, Liana. Betul ke? Oh, you know, you know, you have a class at two o'clock. So, makala, wal. You can have me, Adi. See the problem when you are like staying at home. You, you, you have to do all these things your parents ask you to do, right? You can't concentrate this on your studies you see <sighs> anyway fine so she's out but the funny thing is i have 58 i am you sir sorry sir <laughs> okay i because i know you don't normally do that and you you don't uh you are not absent but it was just that i was uh I was just responding to, 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 to you and then you were not responding to me. So I was just saying to myself, what happened to Ayn? You know? Sorry, sorry, it doesn't matter. I'm just thinking, you know. Yeah. It could well be that you faint, you see. Kalau pitam jatuh pengcang ke, I don't know, you see. And because uh, you didn't respond, so I thought that you pitam ke. Anyway, I'm on example 14.73. Page, page 1473. Are we, are we there yet, guys? Dro Amu Ahi. Why is there this thing D R O dash A M O O dash A H I on top of my, my video or whatever this thing is called? On top of my face. Does, does anybody know? Does, do you have that? 
for the link, sir. Oh, okay. It's funny, the link has three words. Anyway, all right. Uh, I'm on page 14.73. I'm uh, looking at the example at the bottom. It says a group of nine timber piles are three by three files, all right? So three by three files is a square pile. It's driven 10 meter into a saturated clay stratum. The pile diameter is 0.5 meter, all right? And the pile spacing from center of the pile to the center of another pile in both directions, this direction and in that direction is one meter. Okay. And then the undrained cohesion of the clay is 60 kilonewton per meter squared. And we're going to use this uh, pile group equation by Tuzadi, right? And a few minutes ago, I said to you that the, the, the value that you should be given, you know, it is on top of the, at, at, at whatever depth, it should also give you an average value. If, however, the average value is not given, you just take whatever value they give, and you say to yourself that it's the average value. All right? Because they didn't inform to you that. All right? Unless, they, of course, they, they inform to you. Right, unless they give to you the variation of the unbranched strength uh, with depth, see, then you have to find the average value. All right, so determine the ultimate load capacity of the pile group. Now, the first, what you're going to do is find the capacity of a single pile using all the formulas given to you. Right, Q ultimate, the ultimate load is in kilometer, right. Okay, if it is small Q out, then obviously it's kilometer per meter squared. But this one is the Q ultimate, big Q. Uh, so you have pi B D multiplied by F sub S. That is the value that comes from the skin friction, the shaft resistance, right? And then plus A T Q out. The A T Q out is the one that comes from the tape. You remember when uh, we first started, right, we said to you that you can get it resistance from the soil, you can get it at the tip and also around the shaft. All right, the shaft is you the skin friction. All right. Now, for a single pile. And then from table 14.12, page uh, 14.12 is page uh, 14.67, I think. All right. I'm looking at 1467. Okay. It says adhesion of piles driven in clay soil. It has concrete and timber uh, pile. And then you have the different type of soil, soft, firm, or stiff. All right. And then the undrain cohesion. And the last column is the adhesion. And the same is repeated for stiff pile. All right. Reminder adhesion. Is when you have this uh, adhesion is related to co uh, undrained cohesion, C sub U. C sub A is uh, related to C sub U. All right? C sub U is when it is all clay interacting with clay. Clay particles with clay particles, you get the undrained cohesion. But when you have two different materials, pile, concrete pile, and say clay, all right? And then you have adhesion. All right? So in this one, in the table here, you're given the under cohesion and then you're given the adhesion. So you can take it from the table. But I would like to remind you, we define the ratio right, of adhesion to cohesion as alpha. If you have forgotten, I'm reminding you. All right. So the undrained cohesion is equal to alpha Sorry, the C sub A, which is the addition, is equal to alpha multiplied by C sub U. In other words, the addition C sub A is always less than the undrained cohesion. All right? It could be 0.5 of the undrained cohesion, 0.4 of the undrained cohesion, whatever, 20%. Here, your table is given. Now, the undrained cohesion is 60, all right? So it's going to be in firm clay. It assumes that I am assuming that the soil is in firm clay. And then we are uh, match the, the example I actually mentioned to us that it is a timber pile. So it's between 36 to 72. 
All right, the addition is going to be anywhere between 34 to 43. So we're just going to relate, you know, uh, at 60, okay, prorate A to give us the addition. If I do that prorate, uh, pro, 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 pro rating, okay, <laughs> the pro rating uh, for C sub U equal to 60, I will get C sub A equals to 40. All right, now I just defined to you the value of alpha. All right, alpha again is equal to C sub A over C sub U. To reinforce the idea, can you tell me what alpha is in this case? The ratio of the addition to the cohesion. T Yuan Lim says two thirds. So 40 divided by 60, two thirds. Alpha is equal to 0.67. All right, now you remember that. Because sometimes, all right, you're not given the uh, C sub A value. It just gives you the C sub Q value and then they give you alpha. So then I have students who come to me and ask me, so what is the, you know, addition? And I'm like looking at this guy and saying, where have you been all this while? All right. So that's why I'm reminding you about all these things. And since students have the habit of like, you know, tomorrow homework is due, then only they refer to all the set of notes they then forget everything else. Right? <laughs> so, now, I want you to uh, then say to yourself, right, the C sub A is equal to F sub S. What does that mean? That tells you that it is the shaft friction. Okay? Because the concrete and the pile is interacting with each other. Here. Yeah. Okay? See? Addition. The gluey stuff is now attaching itself to the concrete and as you push the pile in, the soil around it is resisting. All right? Now, I want you to go back to <laughs> see, I, I, in some years, I'm just tired of, of, of reminding people, right? Because the more I, I, I remind people, the more people don't bother to eat. You got to say, oh, I remember, I remember. Well, this year I still feel like, okay, I'll still remember, uh, remind them. I'm on page seven of the set of notes. Remember all these things that I showed to you, FS and then C sub A and blah, 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 you know? Okay? All right. You see that when, you know, piles in soil with friction and cohesion, it says here, piles. Okay, in soil, the friction and cohesion, all right? The skin friction here, around here, all right? The one that is around the, the shaft is equal to C sub A plus sigma H tangent delta, all right? The adhesion factor from C sub U modified. That's the C sub A. The C sub A is a function of C sub U, which is equal to alpha C sub U. Now there is this other thing, sigma H tangent delta. We are saying to ourselves that T sub U, because it is undrained situation, because it is in clay, T sub U is equal to what? Undrained situation, saturated. If not given, the water table is going to be on the surface. So what is the value of T sub U? I am in the habit of sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of time, never tell you all of this in the exam. It's you, if you attend class, you will remember all of this thing. Hello, guys. You just gave me a, about a week ago, two weeks ago. Yeah, a week ago, uh, two weeks ago, maybe. Your bearing capacity. Andre, hmm? Andre. What is the value of P sub U with this clay? Andre. Andre, firstly, where do you get to turn from? P sub U, Andre. Ah, Liana says zero. This I keep telling you. You must what? Memorize. And Titra book at zero. Azik, ah. See? Uh, it's zero. And that delta. Is, is has a relationship with phi, yeah? And if that delta, uh, sorry, if the phi is zero, then that delta is zero. 
So sigma is tangent delta, the component that gives you the adhesion here is zero. So the only component you get is from that C sub A, the gluey stuff, the, the, the thing that is, you know, sticking to the shot. Why am I reminding you about this? Because I want to relate all those things you read here. All right, as a student, sometimes you just read too fast. So <laughs> giving meaning to those things that, that I talked about before. Okay, so that is why now that C sub A equal to 40 kilometer per meter squared is equal to F sub S. All right, the sigma A tangent delta doesn't come in here because the P sub U is equal to zero. All right. And the P sub U zero is related to delta. All right. Delta could be two thirds of T. Now, if that is what uh, Pazi was trying to get at, then he is right. <laughs> okay. Usually. <laughs> okay. All right. So, now, the net ultimate bearing capacity Q sub U of the tip of the pile. Okay. Now, you figure out all the shock. But there is one at the tip. Okay as well as giving you all right that one you know is equal to c sub u multiplied by n sub c where do i get that from well i get that from uh Kazaki's equation if i were to have a circle i say to myself it's equal to one by two multiplied by c times nc plus uh, half gamma b and gamma plus point what circle point six all right gamma b and gamma you remember that equation yes we went through so many things, right? But if I don't want to use that equation, I want to use Kamsen's equation, all right? Same formula, but now the N sub C has been changed. I don't have the 1.2. The 1.2 now goes into the N sub C, all right? So I want to use that Kamsen's chart. Now C sub U, I know is 60. So N sub C, I'll have to look at figure on page 14.23. Where is page 14.23? You are looking at it as well, right? Okay. Oh, it's not on page 14.23, uh, is it? I don't have it in here on page 14.23. What page is it? Scampton's uh, chart is wrong. It's figure 14.23, not page 14.23. You have it? Yeah, figure 14.23 is on page, uh, page 14.51. Hello, guys. <laughs> Are you awake? Yeah. Okay, Sasha says yes. Okay, let me see the way. All right. D over B. D is equal to the depth. B is equal to the breadth. All right? And I'm looking at circle or square now. Because I have a circle at the bottom here. See? Circle or square. In this case, I'm using a circular shape pile. All right? So, D is the depth. B is the breadth. So, I, you know, I can calculate D over B. D is that. B is 2.5, so it's 4. All right? Then divide by 2.5, 4. So, if my D over B is 4, what N sub C do I get according to Scampton? Nine, 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 nine. Okay. If my D over B is 4 and a half, what do I get for my N sub C? Kanda lambat. <laughs> Still nine. Good. <laughs> Arman is good. 
Okay, roll multiple. If I have B, D will be 5. I also still get 9, right? You agree with me? So D over B is the border, right? D over B is the border. And most files, they have D over B more than 4. Yeah? They have D over B more than 4. So now, like, T sub U equals to 0, now put it into your head. <laughs> Of T sub U equal to zero, my N sub C, it is circular or circle. Uh, sorry, circle or, or square. N sub C, if it is an unread situation, is equal to what? Goes to nine. Yeah, okay. Of course, if it is less than four, <laughs> then the n sub c is not equal to 9. Okay? All right. So, you know, certain things when you work, especially if you have open book exam, you don't want to flip here, flip there, and look at all of these things, right? Because, you know, it's great to be, you're going to take so much time. Flip here, flip there, in the end, you don't have enough time to do the question. All right? No. So, that's why, you know, <laughs> Some things you just memorize, but be careful when you memorize, okay? All right. So if you look at, uh, if you don't like to just uh, to see scam then you can look at the page uh, on the bigger page, bigger 14.48, which is on page whatever, I don't know. Bigger 14.48. Is it bigger 14.48? Mayhoff's uh, chart. Not this one. Okay, this one. Uh, so not bigger. It's on page 14.48. All right. This is bigger. Page 14.48, figure 14.22. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Emil. Okay. And you see that pile, D will be more than 4. Well, the borderline is 4. All right. If you go there, N sub C, or P sub U equals to 0, it's, a, it's still 9. Yes or no? You get 9? Figure 14.22, page 14.48. Okay. Yeah, no, say yes. So, all right. I'm going back now to remind you all these things coming from bearing capacity of shallow foundation. See, so whether it's shallow or deep, <laughs> use the same chart, use the same theory, all right? Okay, so uh, I could just, for example, just quickly finish this, this example and, and, and just relate and, and to you all these things uh, by talking, but I'm taking a little bit of time trying to remind to you, you cannot forget. If you forget, then you'll be spending two hours if it is open book test, just flipping pages and you lose time. All right? So now all the others then become easy. So Q out for a single pile again, just the I know the, the skin shaft friction multiplied by the area of the shaft and then at the tip multiplied by the area of the tip. Yeah. Okay. So I get that uh, 735 kilonewton. All right. Okay. Now the sum of the ultimate capacities. All right. The sum of the ultimate capacities of nine pile is just if I have a single pile giving me 735, if I have three by three, I have nine pile. So I'm saying to myself, the group pile must have the capacity to resist the uh, load. All right. 9 times 735. So I get 6.5 kilonewton. All right? Now, I want to check that whether this bearing capacity of the block of 3 by 3 pile is actually 6.615 or not. Well, first I need to uh, say to myself that the group has a square shape in plan with the length of the side of the square being 0.5 plus 2 times 1. We need to draw the plan. Okay, draw the plan. Can you see this? The plan center to center. I am, can you see this? Center to center, one meter. The pile itself is point 
is file itself if uh, Arman says not clear. So draw it. The file itself is one pipe. The, 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 the spacing between the pile, the spacing between the pile is one meter. Is blur. Let me see. Clueless, I mean. Okay, here, Nampara. Can you see it? Yeah, I hope you can see it. Still blur. <laughs> The pasaga, ha ha, tak lapar sangat, ha na di. Nampak tak? Ya, yeah, like this. Okay, Amy, say yes, you can see it by the microphone, or not. No. Huh? You can see it or not? No. Allah maaf. Ada pensil je saya nampak dia dah. Ya Allah. Okay. Uh, how to draw this then? I don't know. Uh, okay, look. I'm going to draw one part to the other. You must imagine you have three by three pile, right? This is uh, just now I drew two by two pile, but I think uh, you can draw three by three pile. And look, you have the three by three pile, right? Uh, yeah, in the notes, I have the three by three pile, right? Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to draw between two piles. Plan. Yes or no? Do you see this? Hello. But this is yes. Okay. Spacing. Spacing between center to center of pile is one meter. Put the spacing in. Then only you check with me. Center to center. <laughs> Don't depend on me. Do it so that you know you're making a mistake or you're making it right. Okay. Now, now you check. See, I put center to center. Spacing is one meter. Yes or no? Okay. Diameter of the pile. What is it? <laughs> one five meter, right? Yeah. One five meter. See? Yes? Okay. Now, I have another one here. Yeah, another pile. So one meter, and this distance is also 0.5 meter. This distance is... Now you want to switch off uh, the microphone, Amy. <laughs> so now I have this. See, I have three piles. Then I have one meter, one meter spacing in between. And then I have 0.5 meter, the diameter of the pile. But the, the, from the center of the pile to the tip of the pile here is 0.25 meter. Yes or no? Hello. <laughs> yes? Okay. So the total length, the total length has to be like what is written there. 0.5 plus 2 times 1.0. Yes or no? Let me say yes, sir. I don't know. Yes, sir. To what? I don't know. Yes or no? So I get 0.5 plus 2 meter, right? Okay. Right. 0.25 times 2 plus 1. Mana 1 meter? 2, 3 by 3 pile. Skandar, length. 0.25 times 2 plus 1 meter is only one. There are only two parts. This is 3 by 3 pile. Hmm. Okay. So you get that one at the bottom here. Page 14.7, uh, 4.5 plus 2 times 1. I'm taking a long time about this. Yeah, um, yeah, but two to Amy, 2.5 meter, 0.25 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0.25.
three piles. And the same with the brand, square. I'm taking a bit of time about this because people don't do this. I don't know why. Yeah? That one meter, it says, is center to center, not from pile to pile. It says from the center of the pile to the center of another pile. The actual length, okay, has the, you must imagine that the pile is being, you know, has all this soil around it. So you see, I have a soil. See, I have soil here around it. So I have center to center spacing is one meter, but you know, soil is around here has another 0.25 meter more. Okay. <laughs> you mess up, you mess up all the calculation. All right. Someone else get 10 unit, you get 9.5 unit. Or sometimes you don't get it. You don't, you know, when you look at a chart, it doesn't exist. And then you like, you know, you say, this is a difficult question. You know, I don't know what went wrong and all of that. And then you get stressed and then you cannot do anything at all in the exam. I've seen it too often. All right. So that's why I'm taking time to remind you of all these things. Okay. So it is not trying to solve the problem as such but it's trying to explain the principles you need to get the principles right now i'm done i'm over on page 14.75 so if i apply the Zagis equation for the group pile q sub g all right so i then therefore get q out is 540 that's the tip resistor nine times c sub u just now multiplied by b which is 2.5 because this is square three by three file so i multiply another 2.5 so i get 2.5 square and then the around the i'm looking at this picture now yeah and then around instead you know if for a singular pile there is shaft resistance here for a block pile yeah group pile there is shaft resistance all around this block i, I don't have a block here Around this block, you see this block? Here, block here, block here, shaft here, you know, all this skin friction here. Okay? The tip resistance here is the bottom here. See this block? <laughs> all right? By the way, this is... I remember what this is. See, I'm not being distracted. So, excuse me, don't be distracted. This is... Moas country. Moas, where are you? <laughs> Moas? Yeah, Moas, can you read this? Moas, read it. <laughs> can you read it? Not. What does it say, Moas? You can open the microphone. Hello, Moas. <laughs> He only read this one at the bottom because he comes from that part of the world. This one he, he reads this quickly. This one he cannot read quickly. Uh, actually, this one is, says uh, Tawaf. I think it's That's from the Makkah. Bottom. Tawaf is that's like, the bottom. Uh, going that's around the, the Kaaba. You know? Yeah, I know that's the bottom. The top, what does he say? I don't know. <laughs> uh, see, I told you. Uh, it says, been there. Been there, done that. Then he says Tawaf. <laughs> All right, been there, done that. Tow off. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to class. All right, so I have that. I have 380 plus 6000, and therefore I get 9380 kN. All right, this is from the block failure. Now I could show that this block, if it was to fail, it's going to fail like this. Right? Not like this one here. This one here, uh, you know, different story. Okay, I get 9380 kN. Now, uh, because I have from the single failure, 6000 something, and then I have from the block failure, it's 9380. So what, if it is going to fail, it's going to fail from this single pile capacity, right? But, you know, just, 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 just to say to you uh, what it means. Now, uh, you remember I said about eta efficiency, and I defined it for you. Yes. Now this is 
on the y-axis, the vertical axis, that was defined as eta. Alright? On the y-axis is defined by eta. Now, what is the value of eta in this uh, example? The efficiency. While you do that, let me get to the toilet. Hi, I'm going to the toilet now. I'm going to pee and then come back. It'll take five minutes. Right, what so what do you get? Uh, five minutes is over. What is the value of eta? Hello. <laughs> Come on guys, we have another topic to go through, you know. Otherwise, uh, Atmal Arman says 0.5. No. What is eta equals to? You have done the calculation here. It is the bearing capacity of group divided by the sum of the bearing capacity of single pile. The sum of bearing capacity of single pile, you did the calculation a few minutes ago on page 14.74. And then the bearing capacity of the group of parts you calculate here on page 14.75. So again, what is the value of eta? It is equal to what? What number or what number? <laughs> See, that's why I do all this definition and I ask you again. Azik says 0 0.705. No. Kembali ikut Azik. Basli says 1.4, Liana says 1.417, right? Liana is right. I get 1.42 because I should make it simpler for myself. It is equal to 9380 divided by 666615. All right, see? So... When I do the examples with you, I try to explain all of these things. Even when I when I'm fast, I explain them to you. It's only whether you get it or not. In some days, of course, on some days I just go much faster. All right. Today I'm a bit slower with you. All right. This is uh therefore one point four to but la basli tapita apunita as not as accurate as Liana Allah. <laughs> okay, Basli. All right, so uh, I don't know how you study, but I'm trying to impress upon you, you know, when I see examples, when I do homework, I'm trying always to relate from, uh, you know, the theories so that I don't confuse myself, so that I don't make the mistake. All right? Okay? Because I notice this is what happens to students. When they do the homework, they just want to finish the homework, and then they don't realize what they're doing. So... That's how they lose their marks. Okay. All right. I'm done with uh, that. Need a compart. I don't think we can afford to uh, to have a, a break. Okay. Now I have to go on example eight point nine. All right. Example eight point nine is on page three point nine. So I can perhaps go a little bit faster on this one. Okay. Example 8.9 is on page 349 because I've already taken the uh, time to explain many things a few minutes ago, right? So example 8.49, uh, I have an under rim board pile. It's to be installed in a stiff clay. The diameters of the pile shaft and under rim base are 1.05 and 3 meters, respectively. 
So the ball is to extend from a depth 4 meter to a depth of 22 meter in the clay. The top of the under rim being at a depth of 20 meters. The relationship between unbrained shear strength and depth is shown in figure 8.26 and the addition coefficient is alpha is 0.4. Now, see I told you a few minutes ago, if you are given the unbrained shear strength with depth, you have to find the average value. Yeah? So in this case, they give it to you. All right. Uh, in the earlier example, they didn't give it to you. They just said this is the unbrained cohesion. And since there is no other data and information, you take that value to be the average value. All right? And also the tip value. Now they give you alpha. Now immediately you know to yourself, you know to you know, you know to yourself that alpha is just C sub A divided by C sub two. So somewhere along the line, you're gonna say to yourself that C sub A is equal to alpha times C sub U. All right. You have to calculate that for yourself. All right. Now it says determine the allowable load on the pile to ensure an overall load factor of two. In other words, here they are saying that if you use a factor of safety of two, apply it to the shaft resistance and also to the uh, tip resistance. Um, B, it says a load factor of three under the base when shaft resistance is fully mobilized. In B, it says use a factor of safety of three only for the shaft resistance. Forget about the tip resistance, right? Okay. So, first thing to do is to draw the pile. Draw the pile <laughs> adjacent to the C sub U against death chart. See, I, I, you know, if we use the uh, MS uh, Microsoft. Microsoft, whatever you call it, Microsoft Team or something like that, then I can use a whiteboard or something that I can draw it for you. But, you know, since we decided on Google Meet, then you have to draw it. All right? So what I mean is that here, I, I you know, I don't know whether you can see it. See, I've got this, this picture here, which is the C sub U with the F. Then on the same, yeah, on the same uh, scale, if you like, all right, I draw the under rim pile. Yeah, this uh, under rim pile has a big, big uh, bell shape at the bottom. Can you sort of see it? Yes. You put all the depth there, the diameter. See, I can see it here. Can you draw it and, and do the same? So that you can you can see what is happening. Don't copy my drawing, <laughs> you know. But the learner, the last come to Monday, like B, but leave. The idea is to give it to you what I am doing, not to be clear with you. Right? Everything are clear to the data ka tani dalam ni tadi. Everything is already, you know, explained to you here. But now you want to translate what is explained to a picture here. So that's what I'm trying to do here. So draw besides that <laughs> chart, that figure, what has been explained. Ah, no, no, ada pan lagi apa? Depan sikit air. <laughs> ah, dah, ni, ada depan tu mana lagi? Like I said, don't copy me, copy yourself. Play. All right. <sighs> because I notice students, they don't never like to draw. They ask other people to draw for them. All right. See, sub you again, Z. In a parallel. Yes or no? Okay, Iskandar dah draw, Iskandar ni cepat. Bagus. Ni kan? Alright, nampak. Lepas tu lukis, daripada 4 meters down, sampai berapa meter dia cakap tadi. Something like this. And then you put the, you put the distance here. Berapa ni? I think this is uh, 20. Meter. Somewhere like that. This is 22 meter. 
dan punya the diameter 1.05 meter and then here is 4 meters yeah something like this quickly this is like you know half you can put everything else in there right to scale I could with the chart boleh I think that it's okay <laughs> Right, so that you can see what is being said. So I'm just trying to translate what is being said here. All right, it says uh, the diameter of the pulse shaft and under rim base are 1.05 and 3 meter. I drew just now 1.05, but I didn't put the 3 meter in. All right, bila pile punya base tu memang besar ke atau sama dengan diameter? Ya Allah, tu lah dia tuang. Sekandar ni. <laughs> Skanda, if you have come to class, I would have explained. You have remembered that I explained this to you. See, this tells me Skanda doesn't read. Ah, napa ni? You didn't read and you didn't attend this class. Did I explain this to to you guys when I was talking about pile? Ah, tell us about ya. Ah, guys, did I explain this to you or not? Ni dah tidur semua dah. <laughs> yes, last week. Uh, tu skandar, Bapa Tli say yes. Uh, okay. Itulah sebabnya. Not last week, two weeks ago I think. <laughs> I think. Right? Okay. Now, in fact, I explain to you how they get that bell shape. Right? Okay, so I'm just trying to get all of those things into that that picture there right the part is to extend from depth of four meters so that four meter you put on the upper tool on the depth z all right why am i doing this again translate all this thing so that relate to the depth z all right the cohesion so that then i can imagine that you know it's only uh, the shaft resistance is only from four meter downwards to whatever that bell shape curve is all right, bell shape, uh, not curve, bell shape, uh, pile is the bottom pipe. Then it's easier for you, all right? And the more you do this, the, uh, the better it becomes for you. All right, moving on. So I've got all of that, all right? So now I'm at base, base level 22 meter. The under strength is to 20 kilonewton per meter square, okay? So if I look at uh, my 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 pile, the the, uh, the, the bottom part is twenty two meters. The bottom part of that under rim, twenty two meters. At twenty two meters, if I look at that chart, okay, at that chart it says, and I go up, so I should get about two hundred and twenty. Do you get that two hundred and twenty? Low Newton per meter square. That is the tip resistance of my. Uh, sorry, not the tip resistance. It's the unranged strength at the tip end of the pile. Okay. All right. Now, <laughs> uh, again, n sub c. You know now why is equal to nine. You already put it into your head. All right. A circular shape is either using Stampton or they're using Mayhoff or even if you use uh, uh, 5.14 multiplied by 1.2 Tazagi, you probably get about 9. Okay, but easier for you to use Stampton. This is clay, saturated, right? So the undrained situation is always weaker than the drained situation. So if we put the table at the top, all right. Okay, uh, then it says advisable to disregard skin friction over a length of 2B above the top of the under rim, i.e. below a depth of 17.9 meter, the average value of unrained strength between depth of 4 meter and 17.9 is 130 kilonewton per meter squared. You know, when they try to build that, uh, that, that bell shaped bottom part of the pile, which is bigger than the shaft, right? Okay, they're going to disturb the soil. All right, because you're making it smaller, smaller, and smaller, right? To get that bell shape. All right, so about two times the diameter of the depth, two times B, 
is going to be disturbed. So they say, disregard about it. Where does he get this from? If you read about the pause in there, it says to be above and the, <laughs> the, the top of the pile. So you, if you minus that, to be is uh, 2 times 1.0. A five, which is two point one meters. All right, two point one meter. You minus the the top of the under ring is at twenty meters. So twenty meters minus two point one, it becomes seventeen point nine. All right, you can like do the calculation yourself later. So disregard that two B. So I will put seventeen point nine here somewhere on my. Going. See, I have already put 17.9 and I'm going to disregard it. Okay, I'm going to disregard this. Right? Yeah. Why am I doing this? Because by the time I get to all this calculation, I've already forgotten that I need to disregard. I do not forget, but I know my students forget. So that's what I'm telling you. Put it down. Okay? So, average value of undrained strength between there of 4 meter and 17.9 meter is 130 kilonewton meter. So, at 4 meters, I think this C sub U is what? 50 kilonewton per meter squared. Yeah? At 4 meters depth, it's about 50. And then at 17.9, it's about, let me put there, 17.1 is 9 here. I don't know, about 180 maybe? Right, so between 40 to 180 is about 122.5, maybe. All right, I get 125, so not too bad, it's about 130 average value. Yeah, okay. Yeah, now are you following me? <laughs> Hello, okay, yes, I got it fine. See, if, Le if Liana got it, I think you know, the rest of the class would be able to get it. All right. So, now I need to find the skin shaft friction. Uh, I've already got the tip resistance. Now I need to find the shaft resistance. Shaft resistance F sub S. F sub S is equal to C sub A. C sub A is equal to alpha C sub U. So I've got the alpha C sub U average value between 4.9 and 17.9. So it's about 52, not about, it's 52 kilonewton per meter square. All right? Now, by the way, you know this chart? There's, there's this figure. This comes from site investigation, right? You get all the under your strength, you take the sample, you do all you can do it on site. All right, you remember your site investigation uh, homework? You did it on site, all right? You do that top thing, all right, on site. Okay, but this is, a, you know, too far deep, so maybe you took the sample, and then you took the sample and you did all this unrangeous strength in the lab, and you got that, all right? And then uh, you can draw a straight line with all this uh, analysis. Okay, fine. I could give this, this, this question without giving you this, this, this chart. Instead, I give you a formula. Yeah? I could give you a formula which says that the C sub U is a function of the depth. Like, so I can change, for example, this, 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 this chart here to a formula. The formula is equal to C sub U is equal to the slope of the curve right, the tangent, multiply by depth plus the constant, yeah, it's a straight line, y equals to mx plus c, right, and the constant c here is uh, just equal to what, 50, yeah, so I can get the equation to be c sub q is equal to the slope, whatever the slope of this line is, multiply by z, if z is the uh, depth, plus 50. I could give you an equation and you can find whatever and whatever depth the under strength. Yes or no? Got it? Okay, it's kind of good. <laughs> See, I can be bad. 
Alright, so never only memorize something. Understand the principle. Alright? Because I know some of you will just memorize, oh, this is easy, I can do this. Alright? And then I give you something else, you cannot do it. Huh? Okay. So now, I've already got the shaft and I already got the tip resistance. So I just uh, find the ultimate load. Alright? I pi d squared, pi times three squared times uh, time the, the tip resistance, then the shaft resistance, right? 13.9 is the distance between 17.9 and four meters, all right? And then uh, I, I've already got the average value of the shaft uh, resistance, 52, right? As opposed to the earlier example, which, uh, which didn't bother about giving me the average, so I took the average value to be just uh, what is given. So then I get that, that total value of 16,380 kN to be the ultimate load. So the ultimate load for A, it says, it says take all that uh, shaft resistance and the tip resistance divided by 2, I get 8190. That's A. B, it says apply only to the shaft resistance. So if I apply the shaft resistance factor of safety, right, divide that by 3, then, uh, sorry, not apply to the uh, sharp resistance, uh, apply only to the tip resistance. So take the tip divided by three, so I get 7049. So the, the second one, right, is of lower value. And then it talks about, you know, when you build that, <laughs> that bell shape curve, all right, and you remove the soil, and then you replace it with concrete, there is an additional value Right, additional value because the, the concrete density uh, unit weight is less than the, uh, the 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 soil. Okay, so the pressure applied is more, and then it talks about all of that paragraph there. Okay, plus the allowable load on the pile is this, and you get seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-five unit. And I get this 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 uh, this uh, what do we call it the the explanation was actually given on page, uh, what page was it? Uh, was given on page 340. Okay, they explained it on page 340. They said that uh, page 340 just above negative skin friction. It should be noted that in the case of under rim piles, all right, the reduction in pressure on the soil at base level due to the removal of soil is greater than the subsequent increase in pressure due to the weight of the pile. The left-hand side of the equation 8.32, 8.32 is the, on page, uh, 8.32, wow, it's on page uh, 333, that's just the standard equation, right? The shaft resistance multiplied by the area plus the tip resistance multiplied by the area. So, uh, it says the left hand side, cache 8.32 must then be written as Q sub F plus W minus gamma D A sub B, where W is the width of the pile, A sub B is the area of the enlarged base, and D is the depth of the base level. Page 340. Okay? 340 just above negative skin friction. That's where they explain all these 726 kilometers Newton, which add up to the 7049. All right? That paragraph, the last paragraph, that, that 726 kilonewton, right? If you can't understand what is happening, don't worry too much about it. I would uh, bother about it. You can neglect it. But up to 7049, you need to know. Okay? Why am I getting quiet? Inshallah, okay. Because we buy good. <laughs> All right. That was example 8.9. All right. So I'm taking a lot of time just to, to explain example today. All right. Now, today I talked to you about dynamic group of pulse, and then the, we didn't, did we do any example on that one? Yeah, we did some example, right? No, we didn't. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, we did. We, we did that page 14.73 and 8.9 outbreak. We just finished the example. I did that dynamic file. So there was no example on that. There was the bearing capacity of root out. And then uh, I reviewed all those uh, things previously. Now, uh, I just want to go through uh, the supplement of a pile quickly. All right. And hopefully finish by five or earlier. And then do one more example. And then uh, we stop that. Okay. Uh, so I'm on page 13 now. All right, settlement of pile, then I think they, that will be the end of it. So in Sandy Soil's reliable method is through a pile load test. Now settlement of pile, if you have it in sand, then you just have to do a pile load test. Then you can get the most reliable result. And I've already spoken to you about all this pile load test procedure. So otherwise, you just use any of this empirical equation. My hope says is. The, the settlement of a single pile is equal to B divided by the EF. Right? B is the diameter at base of the pile. F is the factor of safety. You apply to the ultimate load minimum you keep usually is three. That's pretty conservative. All right? And then Scampton, 1953, for pile from above equation of row one, then you put this ratio. First, you sub substitute, sorry, you calculate row one, and then you substitute in here. All right, row over row one is 40 over plus 2.70 plus 3.6 squared. When you see numbers like this, 3.6, 2.7, all right, these are numbers that come from empirical equation. And, you know, they learn through doing tests outside in the field, and then they just say this is the formula. All right, so B is the width of pile group. Yeah, the dimensions are all in meter. Okay. So you just use those, those formula. But that, those equations generally are being used for sand. All right? Uh, reliably, you should do a pile load test, but if you can't, you can use this empirical uh, formula. Uh, in clay, you need to determine the settlement of a pile group, which assumes that the ground load is concentrated at two third depth of the pile length. And uh, figure 8.23 of correct addition on page 345. This, you have done it in supplement before. Page 345, you look at it. All right, see? Okay. Uh, figure 8.23a, you have the, the top part. One is to four. One horizontal, four vertical. And then you take that uh, depth of two-thirds L and then you place equivalent rough. Equivalent rough at depth to the L. After that, the stress transmission is one horizontal, two vertical. That one horizontal, two vertical, you actually did it in uh, settlement calculation. Remember that? Settlement cal calculation, stress transmission, you actually even did it in soil mechanics one as well. Yeah? The figure 8.23b is for sand. So they have different stress transmission. Now the one is to four and three, you know, at depth of, uh, at some depth below. All right? At some depth below, and then you, then you have uh, one is to two. Okay? In sand. All right? Now, I, I won't explain too much on that because you have, you have basically done that settlement calculation, what we need to do is to just go through the example. Uh, only I need to explain to you about the stress transmission of this equivalent rough concept. But perhaps you will uh, understand better when we go through the example. So example 810, page 351. Are we there, guys? Yes? OK. Uh, example 810. So now I have a square group of 25 piles extend between depth of 1 meter and 13 meters, so 12 meter deep pile in a deposit of steel clay, 25 meter thick overlying rock. So I have clay over rock and um, it's 25 meter thick. The piles are 0.66 meters in diameter and are spaced at 2 meter centers in the group. In the 2 meter centers and then pile are 0.6. Okay. 
So the unranged shear strength of the clay at par base level is 170 kilonewton per meter squared. So instead of them giving you uh, the variation of C sub Q with that, now they give you straight away the answer. All right, at the par base level, 170. And then the average value of unrained strength over the depth of the part is 105. So a few minutes ago, you were asked to actually find the average value since they give you C sub U with that. Now they say, fine, you just take this value. All right? The average value. So in the earlier example, the first one that I did, they didn't even bother to explain to you uh, the, the average value. They just give you a number. So since nothing, there are no other additional information, so you take that as the average value and also the tip value of the C sub U. All right? No need for you to assume unnecessarily numbers. <laughs> okay? All right. So, and here the value of alpha is 0.45. Again, alpha is the C sub U multiplied by, uh, sorry, C sub A is equal to alpha multiplied by C sub U. And the unrained modulus of elasticity is given 65 mega newton per meter squared, and M sub V is 0.07 meter squared per me mega newton. Also, the pore pressure coefficient A is given. All of this thing we have done in supplement, topic on supplement. Then the total load of the pile group is 12,000 kilonewton. Determine the load factor and the total supplement. All right. So I can, you know, these are repeats of all the other things at base level, C sub Q is 170, all right? So therefore, you get Q sub F, 9 times C sub U, just like just now. Now you get 150, 1530 per meter square. Then over the depth of the bar, C U bar. I used the word S a few minutes ago to, to, to dictate the average value is 105, okay, kilopascal. So alpha times C U. 0.45 times uh, 105, that is F sub S is equal to C sub A equal to alpha times C U bar, which gives me 47 kilopascal. Right? I can go fast now because you are now familiar with all of this. I've already given two examples on the same thing. So for a single pile, you just take them, all right, tip resistant, multiply by the area of the tip, and then the sharp, multiply by the area of the sharp. All right? And it so happened, this is uh, circular in shape. It may be a square, so you need to find a different value of the sharp resistance if it is a square. All right? Then I get 1495 kilometer. All right? Uh, Q sub F equal to 9 times C sub U. You know why that 9 is. P sub U equal to 0. Scampton's uh, value of uh, N sub C, D over P is more than 4, equal to 4 or more than 4. So you get N sub C equals to 9. Time. All right. Then the ultimate load on the group, assuming single pile failure and a group efficiency of one. So you can just forget about that group efficiency of one. You know, a few minutes ago we said to ourselves, if I go for one single pile, if I have uh, four piles, I multiply by four. So they have 25 piles here. 25 multiplied by 1.95, I get 37 point, another uh, point, 37,375 kilometers. Now I need to find the, the, for the block, all right? For the block, because uh, the width of the group is now 8.6 meters, all right? And therefore, the ultimate load on the group is assuming block failure and taking the full under strength on the parameter. This is just applying the Zagri's equation. A few minutes ago, we have done this, so we're now applying it, all right? L multiplied by B is square shape, right? 8.6 meter, so you get 1530. 8.6 meter, do the calculation yourself, all right? Center to center is two meters. Then the pile is 0.6 meter. So you will get 8.6. One, two, three, four, two times four is eight. And the diameter itself is 0.6. So you get 8.6, all right? Okay, so 8.6 squared multiplied by 1530, which is the, uh, around the, the, the pile, yeah? and then 4 multiplied by 8.6, multiplied by 12, multiplied by 105. F sub S is 105, D is 12 meter, all right? Then 2B plus 2L is, uh, both of that is B equal to L, so you get 4 times B or 4 times L, which is 4 times 8.6, so you get 156. 
500 kilometer. So the load factor, what they call the load factor here, all right, is uh, 156500 divided by 12,000. 12,000 is the load that you apply at the top. It's equal to 3.1 kilonewton. All right. The load factor is 3.1 kilonewton. In other words, my pile, all right, my soil, all right, is, uh, I take the lower value of the two, right? 35.75 is fail through, through single failure, the 7.375, all right? And then my load given is 12,000. So factor of safety is 3.1. A few minutes ago, we, we compared when we did the first few example. The first example we did, right? When I asked you to find the, 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 the what? The eta value, right? When you came out with 1.42, well, but you say 1.4, right? Diana say 1.417, 1. I said 1.42, right? When I did that, all right, so this is the thing down here. We took the, the low of the value, we divide by the ultimate load, the load that is given from the column and the vertical is 12,000. So I get the load factor 3.1. So I have actually a factor of safety of 3.1. That's what they're saying. 156 from the block failure is so big, right? It, 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 it fails first by the, the single, single pile capacity, okay? So there is no likelihood of a block failure. All right. Now it's not going to fail through a single failure, or it's not going to fail through a block failure. What is going to fail, what is going to make it fail, is through settlement. Always, I keep saying to you, if this not bearing capacity problem, is a settlement problem. Most problem is usually a settlement problem. So settlement is likely to be the limiting criteria, they say. Settlement is the one that is going to limit your problem here. All right, referring to figure 8.23a, okay, the equivalent rock is located 8 meter, two thirds of 12 meter. Look at that figure now on figure 8.27 on page 352. So two thirds of 12 meter, so 8 meter below the top of the path. The width of the equivalent rough is 12.6 meter. You know that by now, right? 2228 plus 0.6, so 12.6. The load on the equivalent rough is 12,000 kilo spread at a slope of 1 is to 2 to the underlying clay. So from, from, from 0, if you like, from 1 meter to 8 meter is 1 is to 4, the stress transmission. And then below that, all right, is 1 is to 2. All right? So guys, I have a pile. I'm just going to draw two parts. Okay? So I'm going to just change this to two-thirds of the depth to make it like that. So now I have the load. The load is being applied at two-thirds there. All right, where am I? Yeah. Okay. Are you seeing this? Okay. Puzzly says okay. All right. Uh, so the load on the equivalent rock spread as slope of one is to two to the underlying clay. All right. The pressure on the equivalent rock is so for at twelve thousand. All right, the rough at that point is 12.6, so 76 kilopascal. That is the, that, that is the, uh, the width of the equivalent rough is 12.6 meter, yeah? At the top is 8.6, at the bottom here, at 1 is to 4 is 12.6. Are you following me, guys? <laughs> so top, 8.6, 1 is to 4 stress emission, at 2 thirds is 12.6. Okay, I'm Peter is following good. Yes. So I get 12.6, which is 76.6. All right. Now I want to find immediate settlement, right? Settlement when I am having a raft. We have done this before. It's equal to immediate settlement plus consolidation settlement. All right. You might be using Scampton method. But here they are not using it yet. They are using figure 5.15. Figure 5.15 is on page 177. 
Alright, we go up on page 177. Okay. Right, here, this page. So you see here, they have this picture, small picture here. It is, you know, you have your clay layer and you have your rock layer, right? And then, then it gives you all the examples. All right. Here's 177. L is equal to length. Q is being applied. See, just now, a few minutes ago, I showed you this picture. So now I am just applying that uh, on page figure 177. So I have mu naught and mu 1. And then the immediate settlement is equal to mu naught multiplied by mu 1, Q, B over E. All right, using those two charts, I get for H O B, D O B, and all of that, L O B, on page, from page 177, I get mu 1 equal to 0.42. Mu naught is equal to 0.93. So I get S sub I by sticking in all of those things with the E sub U as 6 millimeter. So immediate settlement is only 6 millimeter. All right. Then to calculate this uh, settlement of this four layer, you have done this before in, in settlement calculation. So they have layers, four layers. Each layer is um, two meter thick, sorry, four meters thick. Take it at the center of each layer, which is then, you know, two meters, then at another four, right? So I have table eight, ten, layer one, two, three, four. Z is at two meters, the first layer, all right? Because well, at the center of the, at the, at, at the not center, it's, it's, it's the middle of the first layer, two meter. Then the second one is four meters away, right? Six, 10, and 14. Then at each of this center, find the area in accordance with the stress transmission ratio of one is to two. Here now is one is to two. Where is my one is to two? Here is one is to two. Here is one is to two. This one here is 1 is to 4. Here is 1 is to 2. Okay? All right. So I get the area. Then I take 12,000 divided by 14.6 squared, which is the area of the equivalent graph. All right? And then uh, next one, 12,000 divided by 18.6. Uh, I get 34.7. Uh, 12,000 divided by 22.6 squared is equal to 23.5. 12,000 divided by 26.6 squared is equal to 17. Then I stick it all into the equation, M delta sigma H, and I get the settlement, total settlement of the odometer settlement is equal to 36.9. All right? And where do I get this M sub V from? The M sub V is obtained from... Wait a minute. It's obtained from figure 7.12. All right. 7.12. 7.12 is from page uh, 259. Page 259. See, I'm, I'm going pretty fast on this one because uh, I assume that you did your settlement homework right here. Okay. All right. So I get my mu and I given the A value that is given. Then uh, I can find my mu, mu. The only problem is that now it's a circular footing and a straight footing. Well, my problem is not a straight footing. It is neither a circular footing. It is a square footing. So I have to change the square footing into a circular footing for me to use because 7.12. All right. That's just pi d squared by 4 equals to 12.6 squared. So d is equal to 14.2 meters. Are we okay, guys? Are you following me? You're quiet now. All right, but he said yes. All right, pi d squared divided by four equals to twelve point six squared. All right, twelve point six is the equivalent rough. Okay. All right, so then I get the equivalent diameter for a circle, which is equal to fourteen point two. Fourteen point two with my a value, I go into this uh, chart to figure seven point one two. So I get uh, the value of mu sub naught. 
uh, sorry, I forget the value of mu. So I find the concentration settlement mu as odometer equal to 19 millimeter. Mu is the Scanton correction value. All right. Scanton ulang balik se square tukar circular tu macam mana? Okay. Area of a square whatever. Area of a square is uh, 12.6 multi uh, multiplied by 12.6. The equivalent rough at depth to that D tadi, 8 meter. So 12.6 multiplied by 12.6 is the area of the equivalent rough. Okay? Shasha. Okay. So, uh, area of a circle is pi D squared over 4. D being the diameter. Okay or not? Okay. Okay, good. So to find the equivalent D, D is equal to 12.6 squared, all right, multi, uh, multiply by 4, divide by pi. Yeah, pi D squared over 4 equal to 12.6 squared, so D is equal to the square root of 12.6 squared, multiply by 4, divide by 5, pi. So the part 14.2 meter. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> Kalau tak dapat, tanya balik. Okay, good. So, then you get that 14 point. So, odometer, make correction for the Scampton punya, Scampton barrel punya correction through that new S odometer. So, you get your 19 millimeter, then immediate settlement plus uh, consolidation settlement, you dapat 25 millimeter. Okay, now, okay? This, I am pretty quick about this because uh, you have done this before with me and then uh, young bearing capacity to pun, you have done two examples before you went into this example. So that's why I'm pretty quick about it. Yeah? Any question? Done, right? I think we better stop here today and, and continue with penetrometer correlation uh, for bearing capacity of pulse uh, next week. Okay. That's a couple of dollars. Hey, we got good. Guys, nice. okay, Padli. Now I have to collect on board, right? Yes? Is that a punk at the yes? Oh, no, 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 Ada dia umur. What did I ask from you? Let me get this right. I asked from you 14, 11, 14, 4, uh, 14, 6, 14, 5, 7.7, 7.8. B. Then 8.7, yes? Izzah cakap tak ada. Apa yang tak adanya? Oh, dia tak tidur. Oh, dia tak tidur tasi. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright. So, nanti apa dia soalan. By the way, guys. Uh, the apa tu the 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 as I understand it, I haven't fully under uh, fully 